Hi, this is Jonas Lindberg, and you are listening to Sonic Perspectives. Hey, everyone. This is Scott Medina with Sonic Perspectives. We're uh, delayed today to talk with Jonas Lindberg and the other side, although this is just Jonas today, but uh, on the cusp of releasing his uh, fantastic new album. We're really excited to hear it. Welcome, Jonas. Thank you. Yeah, nice to have you here with us. So, you know, I, I would think that probably your name will be new to a lot of our listeners here. And so I was thinking maybe to start off, um, how would you initially describe your music to someone who hasn't heard it before? And what kind of influences would you cite? Uh, I would describe it as uh, sort of a, a mixture between uh, the purple Pink Floyd uh, and uh, with a lot of folk music influences. So it's a melodic prog, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, melodic prog. So, always hard to describe your own music. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Has that been a, a consistent style for you? Uh, or have have you kind of grown into that over time? Or is this just something you've always loved and focus on? Well, I've, uh, it's grown into it, I think. Uh, well, I originally I, I listened a lot to the Beatles and, and Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin and that kind of stuff. And found my way into Pink Floyd and that sort of opened up the the progressive world for me and um, uh, so but when I write music it's always it or not always but often it ends up in that kind of progressive uh, rock landscape mm -hmm. so uh, but it wasn't always that way but I've always been been interested in you know not not limiting yourself when you're writing music to a certain genre or something so that you just you, you let it go and see where it ends up and that's when i found progressive found out about progressive rock then i understood that that's what that is <laughs> uh <-huh>. more or less <clears throat> yeah how, how old were you when you first discovered progressive rock uh i would say maybe if you don't count pink floyd i would say in my late teens yeah yeah nice yeah floyd kind of you know straddles those worlds mm. as some other bands do <clears throat> yeah so this new album miles from nowhere it's likely going to get a wider audience um through being signed at, uh, with inside out records now yeah and um for you has there been a significant progression in the approach on this album from your last album pathfinder uh yeah it's it's been uh, well i mean it's the music is is more i think well i, I spent more time in, on writing the songs and it's, it's more well put together i think this this time and also <clears throat> sort of right from the start uh, it got good attention when i started to send stuff out for for uh, promotion so that got uh, inside outs in, in the end that got inside outs attention mm -hmm. so so that's really how i ended up there <laughs> so I, th I think already it's 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 gotten much more attention than the previous ones and it, it's not even out yet so <laughs> right right yeah and the, and the the release date seems to have jumped around i think initially uh, mm -hmm. was this album going to be released last fall because you you know you released a couple of video singles yeah at that time and then it seemed like there was a delay to this yeah. year yeah the thing was that i was planning on releasing it myself you know independently mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, then right when i when i released the second single then in, inside out came came around and showed interest so then we sort of paused everything and and went into that ah gotcha. so so they they sort of they really re they are re-releasing the singles <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice so that's why we moved moved the the release date further ahead because they had a slot in february mm -hmm. right exactly yeah 
for all of the other releases, right? That sounds mm. good. Yeah. So I noticed um, <clears throat> that initially, like in your bio, you were listed as a bass player, songwriter, mm. and producer. But on this new album, you're playing, I think, all of the keyboards and a lot of the guitar and some lead vocals as well. So you really... Mm. Were were you initially is bass your primary uh, instrument? Yeah, bass is my primary instrument, and but I also play a lot of guitars and keyboards, and uh, and sorry, and now I'm singing too. So, uh, but I that's happened already on the other side EP in 2013 when I. Uh, played most keyboards and most guitars myself also hmm. but I didn't sing back then <laughs> yeah so how has that been for you coming forward more as a singer now well it's it's fun I think uh, I, 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 I think it's fun to sing and I, I've always been singing backing vocals you know mm -hmm. while playing bass so uh, the I, I sang one song on the last album for the fun of it. And then, you know, I'm singing on all the demos and, and stuff. So Simon, who is guesting on, on a few tracks, he, he actually was the one who said, well, you sing really well. Shouldn't you be singing more? <laughs> so then I thought, well, I, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. And I really, um, like you have three lead vocalists there, including yourself. Yeah. And I, I love the way that Jenny Storm takes the lead vocals in some areas, like like the beginning of Summer Queen is, is yeah. spectacular. And so how do you choose who's going to sing lead vocals and where? Uh, well, I sort of write the songs for for the other Jonas, the, the singing Jonas. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, then when I chose to sing myself was the songs that I thought I did well in the demos. Mm. And uh, plus we had, uh, had some difficulty scheduling vocal sessions uh, with this album. So that came in handy for me to sing. I, th I don't know how many songs it is. It, I think it's three songs in total if you count various parts of the epics. Right. And uh, then Jenny um, takes the Summer Queen lead because it's uh, that one was originally written for a female vocal. Mm. Um, and there is also a, a few other places where you have to go really high, which suits her. Nice. Yeah. And, and the high and the high backing vocals and so. Mm -hmm. Are you writing the majority of the parts on the album yourself, or do the other musicians co-write with you at all? No, I write most of it. Uh, Jonas and me have been co-writing some songs, and, and the most notable for this album is, is Little Man, which is the sec second track, uh, which we wrote together. And, uh, and also Summer Queen, which I co-wrote together with a friend from college who is not in the band but uh yeah yeah I, I noticed that the uh that the summer queen said that uh it was originally written in like what 2003 or something like that so you've yeah. you've, you've been yeah. at this for a while huh yeah <laughs> i think that was one of the first songs that we wrote that intend was intended to become a progressive rock song mm. Uh, I was writing a lot of stuff, a lot of actually a lot of stuff on the my first EP, the In Secret Pace, which is out on Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those songs were written around the same time, too. So it, it's an old one. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about how that first uh, recording came about in Secret Pace, because it sounded like you were um, that was a, a mu music project while mm. you were in school. Is that right? Yeah, I went to the music academy up north in Pito, and they had an education which was uh, called the Studio Musicians Program, and uh, part of the exam was to record an album and 
sort of use your friends as studio musicians while you were the producer and I played on theirs and they played on mine and so on. So, and we, we got a recording budget from the school and uh, I sort of figured this is the first time that, and might also be the last time, <laughs> although it wasn't, <laughs> that, that I uh, get the chance to record my own music. So, so I put together some of the songs that I had and, and did that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I recently stumbled across that in, in Secret Pace recording. Mm. I noticed on that one and a little bit on on uh, the last album as well, that there was uh, some more of your fretless bass playing featured than there is on this new album. Was was there a uh, conscious decision about do, not doing that on the new album? No, <laughs> not a conscious one. Yeah. I, earlier, I always kind of thought that I should feature a bass solo, but on this one, I, I thought, well, I play all the keyboards already and some guitars, so I, we don't need a bass solo. <laughs> That's what that was kind of my my th my thinking. And uh, but there is some fretless, but also the it, I did, couldn't really find a good place to put a bass solo in. Yeah, it just didn't happen this time. Right. Yeah, and, and speaking of, since you, you do both the, the keyboards and the guitar, and then you have some other guitarists playing as well, like how do you decide when you're on a song if the lead line is going to be played on a synth or on electric guitar? You know, like I, I had this thought while well, uh, I was listening toward the end of Little Man, and but it happens in Oceans of Time and a lot of other places where, you know, the lead melody is played on a synth, but I could just as equally hear it happening on electric guitar how do you choose which will take it i think i choose that in the writing process mostly uh it depends on if i wrote it on a keyboard or i wrote it on a guitar i think uh -huh. Som sometimes i mix it it's in the epic there are parts which is played in unison by both mm -hmm. keyboard and guitar uh, so you know, sort of as a duet thing, but I don't know. I, th I think it's how it's being written that decides it. Yeah, that makes sense, right. Mm. Well, there's several long pieces on this album, but of course the, uh, the longest is the epic, uh, 25 minute long, uh, Miles From Nowhere. Tell us a little bit about the themes in that epic, how that came about. I basically i didn't really intend for it to be an epic at first because i started writing an instrumental tune uh, that didn't go anywhere and then i wrote another instrumental tune that didn't go anywhere and so then i tried to put them together and then i thought well what if i put some more themes in here and then i can write songs based on various themes sort of like an overture mm. and uh, and after that, the, it was quite easy to write. Then the song started to go, <laughs> go somewhere. <laughs> and it became a very long one. Yeah. Yeah. And how did it come about to um, get Royna Stolt involved with the guitar on the finale there? Uh, well, I, I had the solo there. And I, th I thought it would be perfect for Royna Stolt to, uh, to play it because it really fits his style. And uh, I also had been thinking for a long time to feature and uh, someone who is a big influence of mine on on the album. Or actually, I was thinking about it already back with the Pathfinder album, but that never happened. So now I thought, well, this that's the perfect spot to feature him. So I I actually sent him a message, and then and, and that's how that came about. I yeah. just asked him. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, what other um, influences uh, do you have in like the contemporary progressive rock scene right now? Uh, it's uh, well, the Flower Kings is one, and then Spock's Beard is another one. Mm -hmm. 
and also lately the Neil Morse band too. Yeah, uh, I really like their their latest one. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm. And also, of course, a, a Dream Theater f find their way in there sometimes. Right. As well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I like that you include instrumentals too. You know, on this album, it's uh, Astral Journey, and the last album, uh, Zenith, was a really cool track. So that. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice when you bring in the instrumental. I mean, that especially Astral Journey starting off, you know, kind of acoustic and folky there. Mm. Well, the, the Astral Journey was actually some thing that I was playing around with on the guitar. I couldn't really find out with ti what time signature it was in, so it was kind of complicated. <laughs> but uh, when I started to work on it, then, then it sort of grew into a longer tune. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's interesting you mentioned time signatures and not even knowing which one it's in. Yeah. So is that um, for, for you, do unusual time signatures show up just naturally because that's how you're strumming or, or writing? Or do you go in um, intentfully trying to do a different kind of time signature you haven't worked with before? Hmm. Sometimes it's intentional, but not not on this album i think this album the all the melodies sort of stared the direction of the time signature i just played something and then i that it felt good and then i figured out later what it was <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> but, but on um, earlier albums like the other side the song the other side is in 5 8 <clears throat> and that's also a time signature that i that i really like because it's almost a uh, three four but it's it's not really <laughs> you know listening to sting and and, and his way of <clears throat> working with it mm -hmm. nice yeah um you know when i hear a, a recording of this quality and depth i always wonder if um if you're a full-time musician or do you do this in your extra time and you also have a full-time day job outside of music I also I have a part-time day job uh, as a music teacher. Oh, good. So I, I do that for about, well, now it's a little bit more since the pandemic uh, stopped us from playing live, but mm -hmm. about half time. And then I play professionally half the time. So that's what I've been doing. So this progressive rock has been sort of in in between gigs really in, in my spare time so far but i would like to do that more regularly because it's so so much fun right right what other types of um of live uh gigs or what other styles of music do you do uh well it's a lot of cover cover bands and uh, i also i'm Playing actually, I'm playing whatever hmm. happens. I, I have a folk music duo that hmm. we upright bass and fiddle, and then I also have played in a lot of bluegrass bands back in the days. Oh wow! And uh, and uh, late for uh, well before the pandemic, I was playing. I was touring a lot with a guy from Nashville, a country singer called Doug Seegers. Hmm. Oh. So uh, it's it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds like it. Before the pandemic, did the other side get to uh play live gigs much? Well, we did some live shows back when uh, around the time of the other side and Pathfinder, but since then I've been too busy with touring with Doug, so I haven't really been been able to. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, but uh um, hopefully we will start playing more, you know, in the future. Yeah, yeah. Now, now that you've got the inside out record contract, I mean, do you have, mm. does that change uh, how you're thinking about the future of the band now? Mm, yeah, yeah. The, it's up until now, it's been sort of something that happens uh, when, whenever I have some spare time, but now it's, it's more like, I want to write more music because maybe there will be another album soon or yeah we will go out there and tour you know yeah so yeah. It's, it's exciting we'll see what happens right absolutely yeah 
Well, congratulations on the new album. It, it really is a fantastic one. And I'm so glad that it's going to get uh, yeah. a good Thank distribution you. so that a lot of people will get to hear it. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, bravo. And uh, Thanks. hopefully we'll see you sometime in the States. Yeah, hopefully. That would be that would be great to go there and play. Yeah. Yeah, really. I, I'm loving this album so much. It's it's exquisite. And, and for me, you know, like out bands like Spox and, and Neil Morse uh, being some of my favorites, this is like right mm -hmm. in there. And it's just so well written and produced and performed. Uh, you've done an outstanding job. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So I'll be thanks. writing an album review in the next uh, week, too, and we'll we'll get the word out there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Great. All right. We'll go get some dinner, I hope, and have a good night. Yeah, you too. All right. Thanks.